star speaker today, Dr. Burkett, who's a board certified Indian veterinarian and has a practice at here in Durham, um, or close by in Durham. And take it away. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, it's too beautiful outside to keep you in for very long, so we're going to get started. Um, as she said, I'm Dr. Burkett. Um, my practice is in Durham. I do birds only there. And we're here today to talk about avian first aid. So what is avian first aid? It's the initial treatment given to a sick or injured bird while waiting for veterinary care. It's administered in emergency situations to stabilize the patient until complete medical care can be provided. It's not a substitute for veterinary care. So regardless of the emergency, you can do your first aid, or sometimes you can't, but you need to end up in a veterinary office somewhere after it's all said and done. So what's an emergency? It's a serious, potentially life-threatening injury or illness that requires immediate medical attention. If you're not sure of the severity of the condition of your bird, you need to consider that it's emergency and, and act that way. So how do you determine what's an emergency? I kind of broke it down into a couple of categories. You want to call immediately for any of these situations. If you have bleeding that doesn't stop, if there's an animal bite, if you see blood in the droppings or in the regurgitant, if there's extensive burns, broken bones, head trauma, ataxia or seizures, and basically ataxia just means um, wobbling, unable to hurt, stumbling about. You want to call immediately if there's any kind of poisoning, either inhaled or ingested. If there's a puncture wound or a deep cut. If your bird is having difficulty breathing. Or if they're straining to pass droppings or an egg. So call immediately if you see these things happen. Just Get in the car, call on the way to your vet, actually, would be the best way to handle that. So, you want to call the same day if your bird is not eating, or if you see any eye irritations like redness, swelling, discharge. <clears throat> if your bird has swallowed a foreign body, or if your bird is showing general signs of being sick. And I call this a, a sick bird syndrome, and there's a list of things we're going to go over later to explain what a sick bird syndrome is. So you want to call the same day if your bird has any diarrhea, is self-mutilating, has any sudden swellings on any part of its body, if he's drinking a lot of water, I stress water there, <laughs> and um, if he's showing any lameness, you want to call the day that you see this. And hopefully you'll be able to get an appointment that day but if not, these things probably are okay within a day or two. But you need to call that day because there may be something that a veterinarian can tell you over the phone to do to stabilize your bird until you can get in. So, <clears throat> I think the most important thing about handling emergencies and administering first aid is you want to be prepared. And what does that mean? You want to be familiar with what's normal for your bird so you are able to recognize abnormal. You want to know how to safely capture and restrain your bird. And you want to have some supplies on hand, a first aid kit and some other stuff we're going to talk about, so that you're ready to deal with this emergency. So being prepared, what does it mean to know normal? I think most importantly is to recognize what normal droppings are. And I, I do put normal in quotes because normal can change based on your bird's diet, based on your bird's condition, it's molting and that sort of thing. And occasionally, a bird can have abnormal droppings and it's okay. But if you see several abnormal droppings in a row, that's probably an indication there's a problem. You need to know how many droppings your bird has average on a daily basis so that if he's having fewer than normal then you can pick that up. You also need to know what your bird's is. 
Everybody should be weighing whether you have one bird or a hundred. A hundred would be more difficult, but you need to be weighing these birds on a weekly basis and keeping a log, a spreadsheet in your computer, a handwritten thing in the, in the cabinet. Weighing your bird regularly will give you an idea of its trends. If, you're, if your bird loses a couple of grams, you know that you don't have to panic. But if it loses 10% of its body weight, then you're concerned. So you need to know what normal is so you'll know when your bird has lost weight. And weekly, I think, is, is about as minimum as I would go for weighing a bird. You need to know what is normal for your bird as far as behaviors are concerned. One of the first things that happens to a sicker injured bird is they become quiet. So if your bird's a talker, probably he's going to stop talking. Or if he's just vocal, he's going to become quiet and not vocalize. That's the time you want to intervene. You don't want to wait till tomorrow to see if he gets better. Because most of the time they don't. So you want to really know what's normal for your bird as far as its behaviors go. And maybe your bird's drinking too much, so he's urinating more. If the white is not white, then there could be some organ problem going on. And if the green part is not formed, it's more like pudding or kind of splats, then that's an indication there could be some diarrhea. So you want to examine each little part of the dropping, and each part of the dropping tells you a different story about the bird's health condition. So before you can handle an emergency, you want to be prepared by knowing how to properly capture and restrain your bird. Proper restraint's going to prevent injury to you and further injury to your bird. Sick or injured birds should be handled as little as possible, but the benefits of medical treatment are going to far outweigh stress of handling. And that's the case too with seeing a veterinarian. You don't want to sit home because you think your bird is going to be stressed out from the car ride to the veterinary hospital. You need to just go. Because you're going to get a lot more benefit from the medical treatment than the <coughs> negatives that's going to occur from the turning that energy to be out on your hand and being scratched or played with is going to take energy away from him healing. And you're going to add to the stress by doing that. So sick or injured bird, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, needs to be in a hospital cage. And once treatment is administered, they need to be left there and observed or taken into a, a clinic to be treated further. You don't want to attempt anything, not even an exam, until you have your bird restrained. And that's the hardest part for the, the average bird owners, restraining their bird, because I don't want to hurt my bird. But not doing it correctly is going to cause more problems than, than you're going to help by trying to not hurt your bird. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Well, you can use a towel to capture your bird. If your bird is towel trained, that's probably pretty easy. If a towel frightens him, then maybe you want to try a different method. And every bird through my door into my clinic, I do a little bit differently to get my hands on them. Once I capture them, the restraint's the same across the board. So you can use a towel, or if your bird is pretty tame, like I do, you can sort of scratch the back of its head, sneak your hand, fingers around its neck, and then restrain.